Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I want to walk you through five of the top machine learning open data sources that are available on the internet. So if you want to go ahead and practice machine learning and you need the data, then this video is for you. And if you stick around till the end, I am going to give you a bonus tip that is going to allow you to rapidly increase your ability to find the appropriate data set for you on the internet. Now machine learning itself comes in various different forms and sizes. You can do various different types of techniques on data and for that you need specific types of data. Anything from natural language processing to regression forecasting to classification problems. And for that you need data. So I'm going to walk you through five sources that I use quite often. First one is the UCI machine learning repository. Now this is a great repository with a lot of data. You can go ahead and look at something like the most popular data sets or you can go to view all data sets and then you can do a search here if you want. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and look at retail sales. So I can do something like click on online retail and then if I wanted to, I would go to the data folder then I can go ahead and download that data set. Now let's take a look at what this data set looks like. All right, so when we look at this data, there's some interesting information in here. So you may be asking yourself, well, how do I use this data in machine learning? So there's a few things that you can do with this kind of data. First and foremost, you notice you have something like customer ID, and you also have quantity purchased, and you also have description, and you have the item code. So you can very easily build some kind of a predictive algorithm in here. So for example, if I have a customer ID that when I look at their basket, they went ahead and bought all these different items in here. But then when I go ahead and look at these specific items like cream cupid hearts or whatever that may be, I can go and see who else has bought that item and what other item have they bought with it that this customer does not have. So that's a great option for things like upselling. I can go ahead and say, hey, did you also want to consider buying this item as well because other customers are also buying it with this item. That's one of the machine learning algorithms I can build. The second one is I can even try to predict what a customer is going to buy before they even buy it based on things like the date that they bought it, who bought it, and what they bought. And you can even look at the quantity. You can get a general idea of how customers are repeatedly buying this product. That gives you a little bit of information on consumption. So if I look at something like white hanging heart tea light holder, maybe they're not going to buy that often. But if there's a consumable item in here, something like popcorn, for example, you can see that if they buy popcorn and they buy two, the next time this customer buys it may be in like a couple of weeks. And so you can start doing some pattern recognition to say, okay, well, when do I expect this customer to buy it again? And maybe I send them a promotional price with a small discount to entice them to make that purchase. So there's a lot of good information on this website. I'd encourage you to go ahead and browse it. Now, the second one I want to talk about is something called visual data. Now, visual data has some really good computer vision data sets on here. So if you want to do things like look at autonomous cars or this one, which seems to be very popular, deep fake detection here. If you click on this data set, you can actually go ahead and download a fairly large data set. Now, I'm not going to download this one because when I actually went to the data set on GitHub, it is literally a couple of hundred gigabytes and I don't think I have the storage space right now. But it looks like you can use a lot of this information for things like deep fake detection um, and forensics. And if you go back on this website, you can even look at other data set, like I said, related to things like autonomous cars. So if I go up here and I type in autonomous driving. You can see that there's a whole bunch of different data sets around that. So you can get sensor data, you get a whole bunch of other information. So really good to actually start doing some machine learning based on identifying objects. So is it a car? Is it a bird? Is it a bike? A whole bunch of uh, training data set is available in here. And it's a great way to go ahead and do some open CV machine learning problems. The third data set I mean is one of my favorite and that is Kaggle.com. If you notice most of my videos, I, get, I do a lot of videos based on uh, data sets from Kaggle. So I just go up to data sets up here. You can do something like type in Superstore, which is a very popular data set. And when you click on that, you can do things like, so when you click on it, you scroll down. So what I really like about Kaggle is it gives you the opportunity to go ahead and preview some of your data. And it's not massive data, it's 11.4 megabytes. And you can do things like look at, um, you know, information on date, when it was shipped, the customer information itself, um, any kind of location information, category, subcategory, products, sales numbers, and then quantity sold. Again, very similar to the problem above, we can do some of the machine learning algorithms that I mentioned, but you can even do something like a localization analysis. So you can say, you know, what product sells where the best. So when I'm actually going to stock the inventory, I can actually optimize my inventory because if there's certain places just, just, that just don't have the density to sell some of this stuff, maybe I don't stock it there. 
The other thing you can do again on this is personalization. Since you do have customer ID information here, you can identify what they buy, when they buy it, and you can try to push promotion towards them or push like products or upsell products. And then finally, you can also do pricing strategy on this. You know, given the fact that I have my sales and quantity, I can easily compute the, the purchase price. By playing with your price, very similar to what Amazon does, you can actually try to see how that impacts your quantity. So Kaggle is an amazing data set lot of information on there i highly encourage you to go ahead and check it out it's probably my primary data set that i go to but anyways something for you to check out all right the fourth one i want you to check out is actually by stanford network analysis project which has an acronym snap and so this is snap.stanford.edu a lot of good information here but if i go to snap data sets right here and i click on this but the one i want to focus on is i want to go and i'll just type in here product reviews all right, so this is, when I look at this, this is Amazon's reviews for a whole bunch of different departments. And so what you can do with this is plentiful, actually. Here's a sample of what you would get. You get product ID, product title, um, some of the product information. You'll get the actual helpfulness, and that is how helpful was this rating, what that user scored this product, when it was uh, reviewed, and any kind of information on it. And so when you're looking at the type of use case for this type of machine learning, natural language processing easily comes to mind. You can do a whole bunch of unsupervised learning models, including NLP, you can look at clustering, word vectorization, and a whole bunch of different things to identify if there's any types of clusters with some of these reviews as well. You can look at things like personality traits for specific reviewers. Do reviewers with the same ID, for example, have a common theme? Do all the reviewers with low scores have some kind of a common theme? Is there a way to please these folks? You can also do things like, was there a correlation between what the price was at the time and the review score? So maybe somebody thought that they were expecting more for the value and they didn't get what they wanted. But now, if you lower the price, maybe those reviews will go up because the expectations go down. So you can play around with information like that as well. Finally, you can do a sentiment analysis. Overall, was this review positive or was this review negative? And the last data set that I want to go over today is called OpenML. OpenML is also a really cool data set. Uh, that I like uh, that I like using as well. Probably the second one that I defer to most of the times. So there's a whole bunch of different things here, but we're going to focus on the different types of data sets that you have. You click there, you're highlighted on data. So I can go ahead and look at something like this data set. So let's go ahead and open this one up. And I can go ahead and preview all the different features in here. So what this one basically allows you to do, this data set classifies people described by a set of attributes as good or bad credit risk. So if you notice, I actually did a whole machine learning tutorial and a series on using things like credit rating and historical information to determine whether or not somebody was approved or rejected with a loan. I'll link that up above so that you can take a look. It's actually a six part series. I show you how not only how to build a machine learning model, but also how to deploy it in Django and then deploy it on Heroku as well. But again, when I look at information like this, a lot of good information in terms of credit history, their employment status, um, and a whole bunch of other information. Again, something like this, you can easily use to do things like credit ratings. You know, Are they gonna be rejected or are they gonna be accepted for some kind of a loan? And again, if you go back to data, there's a whole plethora of all different types of data sources here. Blood transfusion, monk problems, tic-tac-toe. I mean, it's really endless here in, in terms of the types of uh, data you have access to. So a lot of good information. And as promised in the beginning of the video, here's my little bonus tip. There's actually another data aggregator that I want to show you, and that's Google Dataset. So you just go to Google and you type in Google Dataset. Once you do that, you can go to Google Dataset Search, and I can go ahead and type in something like Sales, and I'm going to show you what it does. What this does is it'll look at all the different types of data sets that are associated with sales, but on different websites. So it'll look at things like data.gov.uk. It'll look at kegel.com. It'll look at statistica.com. So a whole bunch of different popular data sets will actually just house their information um, on their sites. And you know, Google is great at crawling these web pages. And if you're interested in learning on how to do web crawling and, and web scraping, I'm gonna link another video above right now. But another really efficient way to go ahead and search for data because it goes ahead and sifts through a whole bunch of different data sources. So that is all today, guys. That's my top five different data websites that I frequent to go ahead and get my data so I can run my machine learning algorithms. If you have any additional ones, let me know in the comments below. I'll be sure to address it in a future video. And if you found this content helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye.